Hello, welcome to this episode of Hypnotist Bernice Explosive. And joining us again tonight is Erica, our favorite guest. Hi, guys. Uh, since uh, when was the first time you came in here? Like, ah, uh, gosh, it must have been 2012, 2013. 2012, yeah. yeah, so. And since then, Erica has been with us for like a million times. <laughs> Maybe like five, six times? Yeah, yeah about there. We, yeah. We, we've documented my unfolding journey the past journey couple into, years. Well, you're, well. You're originally you're from San Francisco before you uh, started here. Uh, no, I, I did actually live in L.A. before I moved to oh, yeah, Boston. Okay. And okay. that was uh, back in 2011, 2012 that, okay. that I came here. So, um, yeah, I think I've lived in Boston for about six, seven, I think seven years. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's have a recap then. <laughs> when you first came to Boston, what were uh, what was uh, what brought you to Boston? You know, uh, well, I came to Boston because my sister was here in town, okay. um, and I had uh, just sort of given up on LA. I was okay. living in Los Angeles, trying to do the whole actor thing out there, okay. and I was really sad to leave LA uh, and and come come to Boston because I felt like my acting career was over, but. That's actually how, how we met because I, I, I started my acting career here in Boston okay. and I restarted it and I actually ended up finding more success as an actor in Boston than I ever did oh. when I was in Los Angeles. So um, How did you do that? Uh, uh, the power... Let's go for your gory resume, <laughs> like which films yeah. were you in? Yeah, so most recently, my, 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 my <laughs> best credit most recently um, was I was in Equalizer 2 with... I had a scene with Denzel Washington, oh, wow. Melissa Leo, and Bill Pullman. It oh, was wow. me and three other actors, two of which had uh, were Academy Award winners. Oh, wow. uh, it was an incredible experience working with them on set. Okay. The only bad part is they cut my scene from the movie apparently, oh, really? so I got to I got to have the experience, but I can't necessarily you show were in the anybody. Were you in the credits? I don't know. I haven't. I haven't, you seen, haven't seen it. The back. I just haven't seen it. In the you just left. <laughs> well, no. I just. I never. I just never went to the movie. I. Okay. I haven't seen a lot of the movies that I've been in. Um. <laughs> well, you know that was fun. You know you were in. Oh the, yeah, it was um, great. Melissa. Yeah, McCarthy. and I was also in the heat with um, with yeah. Melissa McCarthy and Sandra Bullock. Right. Oh yeah. Um, in the first ten minutes of the movie, Melissa McCarthy's character is being introduced. She's busting this dude. She's this. She's this female cop busting oh, yeah. this dude for picking up a hooker. Okay. I'm that hooker. <laughs> I claim to fame. <laughs> yeah, so that was great. So, uh, so since you have since the last time we talked, when was that? Uh, oh gosh, it was many years ago. I think the, the first years. episode. I think the first episode that I came on. I think I was still working my old job, and I was sort of summoning the courage to quit to pursue my acting. You, you were with uh, real estate. Uh, okay. That was what I got into. So I was before I quit my job to to jump into dive into my dreams. I was the assistant creative director at an we event We were helping you company. to get out the courage to yeah. call random people. Yeah, yeah. so, so then I quit my house. job and I ended up um, uh, getting into acting and real estate at the same time. Okay. And that was short-lived. The real estate was short-lived. The okay. acting was much, much, much longer than that. Um, uh, and then from the uh, for, from the real estate, then I really transitioned full, fully into my photography career. So over the past okay. like five years, I've been building my career as a professional headshot photographer here in Boston, and um, and been quite successful Great. because of my my experience with the acting community. Great. And as in my experience as an actor myself, that really lent 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 well into me. Um, nice being able to serve actors really well with headshots. Oh, so I've been doing that, and I have been um, saving my money. How did you get into the headshot business? Uh, I was meditating, and I got, the, okay. I, got, I got the idea, or it was sort of given to me the idea that I need to get a camera. And then mm. one thing led to another. My dad was getting married, and so yeah, in exchange for the wedding photography, he got me the camera. Oh, wow. Um, and then from there, I just started doing because I, 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 you know, I didn't have an income, and okay. I was living on credit cards and 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 good wishes, <laughs> and so I started just doing headshots for my actor friends, and then I got good at it, okay. and then I got uh, proficient at the Facebook marketing and the social media oh, marketing. Perfect, yes. So then I uh, I just grew that business and. That afforded me the ability to work really hard during the summer and save up my money so I could go traveling in the oh, winter. Nice, nice. So I'm about to make my fifth trip to Asia in four years. Oh, wow. I did two trips to India, two trips to Thailand, and now I'm about to go back to Thailand oh, to wow. try to uh, establish my new identity 
as a mermaid there on the island. So that's probably the biggest piece of news that your that your your viewers don't know, or, or the the <laughs> right. biggest update to share with the viewers is that during my last trip uh, to or two trips ago, two years ago to Thailand, um, I ended up in the Philippines and going and I attended mermaid school, wow. where I became a certified that's mermaid kind of random, swimming it? instructor. Like, how, how it is. You... Well, again, the whole mermaid thing, again, st I was meditating before I left okay. for my trip. I was still trying to decide if I was going to go. You should teach us how to meditate yeah, right? uh, <laughs> the way you do. That's so I don't know. productive. Like. So I, I was meditating and I got this vision of myself with blue hair. Okay. And so I was like, all right. So a couple of days before I left on my trip, I dyed my hair blue. Actually, I had my friend um, Candice over at Anita Curl. Okay. Uh, she... she did an amazing job, seven different colors of like blue and purples in my hair and it was amazing. And when I turned around in the in the chair at the salon and I saw myself for the first time, I was like, Oh, I'm a mermaid. And then from then on everyone started calling me mermaid. And then I went to this island mm -hmm. and everyone called me mermaid. And then someone gave me this beautiful Thai mermaid um, artwork for Christmas and I turned that into of a mermaid, of a Thai mermaid. Okay. And I turned that into a tattoo on my hip. Okay. And she has blue hair as a way of making that oh, blue nice. permanent. Nice. And then I was, I was like, I was good, I was happy, everyone's calling me mermaid, you know, whatever. And I said, this, you know, what would it be like to actually swim with the tail? Like, what would that be like? Oh, wow. And then someone tagged me uh, on a, because that's the good thing about coming out to the world as a mermaid, is that everyone starts tagging you right. in mermaid stuff all across the internet. It's wonderful, actually. Um, but someone tagged me in this little video about this school in the Philippines where you could go and you could take these classes right. on how to swim like a mermaid. Right. I was like, sold. Uh, my, I had, uh, before that moment, I had a trajectory planned to Cambodia, oh, wow. and then in point zero three three seconds, everything changed, and I was bound for oh, the wow. Philippines, and I ended my trip last year um, with uh, two weeks in the Philippines at Mermaid School, oh, wow. and then I was just addicted. Was, from was that like a very strict admission process to be a mermaid? No, anyone can be a mermaid. You have anyone to, like, can be a mermaid. A, no, 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 no. No, it's a, it's a, it's a very open, um, <laughs> very equal opportunity. Oh, do you need to have a resume? So? <laughs> <laughs> no. All you need, I like to say, is all you need for mermaiding is um, an open mind. Okay. A sense of humor. And it's mostly female. To, to no, they're like, mermen. Yeah, they're mermen. Man, yeah. Man-made. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah they're they're mermen. Okay, mermen. Yeah. Yeah. So a uh, a open mind, a sense of humor, and a willingness to step out of your comfort zone. Okay. Which coincidentally is also where growth lies. So, um, uh, having a mermaid experience is is very um, it's very inducive to growth. I would say because it it forces you to take off the sort of set of paradigms that you you had before and sort of have a new sort of approach to to yourself to, to viewing yourself right. you know so I, I really enjoy it and so that's actually my plan is I'm going back to the island to explore this mermaid identity okay. and uh, do you have a mermaid name? just people call me mermaid okay. they'll just call me mermaid but also like mermaid Erica or mermaid. Erica Mermaid. Okay. You know, that's the thing with mermaids. Cause there are a lot of professional mermaids out there today. Do they, do they use alias or do they just use their own name? They use their name, but they'll either okay. be like Mermaid Melissa or Melissa Mermaid. Okay. Hannah Mermaid. Mermaid. Okay. I think it's Hannah Mermaid. There are some very very famous mermaids. Look them up. Okay. They're very impressive okay. people. Um, so that's my, my, my plan is just to go out there and have the mermaid experience. Actually, my the company or the... the yeah, the, the website that I, I'm putting together is called MyMermaidAdventure.com. So a mermaid adventure is, I coined this term because of this thing I started doing on the island. I, I had my mermaid tail on a, on, a bat, in a, on my backpack. Okay. And I would get on my motorbike and I would drive around this beautiful tropical island nice. and, and, until I found a body of water, whether that was an ocean or a waterfall. Hey, here's an invention idea, like a, a bike that you could ride with your mermaid tail on. That sounds very dangerous. <laughs> it would just be laying down. That still sounds very yeah. dangerous. <laughs> that's you know that that's the challenge about mermaiding is like yeah, that's you're, true. you're essentially tying your legs together underwater, which is why there have actually been people who have gotten injured and who have drowned wearing the oh, tails yeah. because they're not they're not qualified and they're okay. not supervised. Okay. So that's actually where the role of someone like myself would come in. And that's actually I, I had my first um, students this past this past winter. I was on the island in Thailand. And I started getting my first. It, it, it was funny. It was one. It was pretty much one year to like the day that I got my first mermaid student, paid mermaid student. Okay. And um. And what was what was my point? What was my point? What was my point? 
Uh, oh yeah, and then and then I I I had a couple couple students, but my best, my favorite student that I've had so far was a seven year old girl named Iggy from Scotland. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And we got together for a couple of lessons in the pool. And by the third lesson, she brought two of her friends. Oh no! Nice. And it was so much fun, just like playing with these kids and teaching them a, a different way of swimming. But then what's great about the mermaid is there's also there's a lot of like um, lessons about breathing and okay. mindfulness and okay. slowing down and, and must be hard because you. Both of your feet have to kick at the same time, right? It's a and new, like it's if, a new way of swimming. swimming you're exactly. When you're, when you're, when you're yeah. a human, you know, you're yeah. swimming like this. Right. And so when you first put on the tail, it's very like disconcerting because the way that you were doing it before no longer works, which is oh. why it's such like a great sort of a, like it, it supports people to to shift their 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 mindset oh, because yeah. you can't do it the way you used to. It's a okay. new awareness. It's a new activity. It's a new expression. Um, and so I really, I really enjoy that. I'm challenged by it, and I enjoy it. I enjoy the challenge, because there's a very big difference between swimming like a mermaid and swimming like a graceful mermaid. It's <laughs> very two very different things, okay. and there's a big buffer of time between the two. So I'm I'm still learning. I'm still learning how to swim like a mermaid, and that's actually why I wanted to become a teacher. Okay. Uh, a mermaid instructor is because if I really want to learn, then I should teach. What kind of career prospect is uh, for mermaids? Um, well, there are a lot, I think there are a lot of different trajectories mermaids typically go. Um, you can have, uh, the, the, the core foundation is building a personal brand. There are some mermaids who will really just sort of push going to do like live party, like live events, performances at kids' okay. parties, you know, those sort of like live performances. Um, there are other mermaids who, you know, work in affiliation with aquariums or, okay. or, you know, an amusement park or something like this or a casino, you know, they'll be hired by, right, by yeah. that kind of venue to be like the sort of in-house merm. Okay. Um, and then w sort of where I see myself going is building my own independent brand. Um, I've restarted my YouTube channel quite recently. Okay. So I'm going to be putting out mermaid themed content. We'll put content. the link um, below here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so just creating content to share this with people. And then ultimately what I'd like to do, or one, one sort of idea that I've had is, so on the island I'm going to be doing my swimming lessons. Okay. Uh, I'm going to be doing photo shoots, mermaid photo shoots, because I'm still a photographer. Okay. So I'm going to take amazing pictures for people. And then the other thing that I'd like to do in the future is put together group trips. So like okay, magical nice. mermaid retreats to Thailand. Nice. So essentially what I would be doing is, is facilitating mermaid experiences for others. Okay. So people would have the opportunity to come to Thailand for two weeks okay. and come to this island, and I would curate this experience that would nice. just fill their heart. You know. Nice. The danger is that you know they probably they won't go home the same. Right. Yeah. You know. That's great. So, um, what would you like to work on tonight with hypnosis? You know, so something that I always that I've always struggled with, and that I always need support with, is just is just the confidence and belief in myself. Okay. You know, to really, and also be willing to put myself out there. And that's what it is. I I felt like there is a resistance within me. Okay. A resistance that stops me from taking key actions, like 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 planning my next set of Instagram posts. Right. You know, why I've had that on my to do list, and yet something keeps holding me back from doing it. There's something that says, oh, I'm not ready, or I'm not good enough, or I can't do this. I can't, I can't, you know, I need oh, right. someone else yeah. to come and do it. No, no, no. I, I'm, I'm at the point where I want to just, I want to own, Okay. I want to own myself, I want to own what I'm doing, and I want to be confident in taking the actions That's that I need to. That's an interesting question. So you've been here for like five years. How do you see yourself um, changing with the sessions that you have gotten in the show? That's a great question. Um, I would definitely say that over the years, I've I've definitely become more confident in myself, and I, I, I think I trust myself more. I think that was something I was really struggling with at the beginning was, you know, feeling all these these desires, but not, again, again, but not, not feeling like I, I could do it. So I'm still on that journey to, right. To bolster my my sense of self confidence and and belief in myself, and I think maybe one of the the, the big things is is still just like um, facing facing the unknown and not okay. being overwhelmed by the fear, but rather sort of st stepping gracefully into the unknown would be nice because I've okay. I've stepped into a lot of unknowns in the past years, especially with my travels, and 
Uh, sometimes I feel like it, it was a sloppy process because I was afraid and sometimes I made decisions out of fear and desperation and that's never a good thing. We'll roll, up, roll back a little bit. You already talked about that you have taken some spiritual journeys to India. Yeah. How has that changed you? As a oh, okay. Uh, you know, I used to think that energy was something, was only something that ran in the electrical outlets. Okay. But now I know that energy is everything. It's okay. everything that I am. It's everything that is. It comes through my voice. It comes through my eyes. It comes through my movement. You know, I, I, I tend my energy with my food. I tend my energy with my self-care. I tend my energy with my sleep. You know, these were all things that I completely took for granted before. Um, you know, I, I know sometimes that I... I think I think I remember one episode that I did here, and I just remember just being so frazzled because I was doing all these things and spreading myself so thin. So I'd say that one way I've changed over the years is I've really cut a lot of the stuff out of my life that wasn't okay. working, or I was really giving my myself away. I was giving my energy away to everybody all the time, right. and not being selective. So today I'm much more selective about how I use my energy and who I share my energy with, um, and that's something that I'd like to to continue is 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 to keep that keep developing that sort of like focus like what's the most important thing what's the most important thing what's going to move move me ahead what's going to move my mission ahead you know and you now my, my mission is to uplift and inspire others using the art of mermaiding or that's my current the current okay. iteration of my mission because I also know that my you know my identity has been in a state of flux my identity has been changing you know that when when I started on this show I was I was really gung-ho about acting in my acting career and then and then you know, I did that. I, I created a community around that. I, I had a lot of success in that area, and then I sort of lost interest because something else was calling me, and then I was drawn to go on this big journey to India, and then right. back to India, and then and then I, I was working on my, my business here. Do you think you could have come to where you are today without those experiences? Like, had you oh, not been, no. had you not been working on the the acting and the acting community? Oh no, no, no! Everything, everything, everything happened so perfectly with the acting community because while um, you know, while I'm not following the acting path, you know, to New York or Los Angeles towards an Oscar and that that right. whole thing. What I have done is is my experience with the acting community taught me how to speak on camera. It right. taught me how to make videos. It taught me how to present myself publicly. It taught me how to audition. It taught me how to uh, coordinate a group of filmmakers to produce a film right. or or a commercial, you know, or you know, a, a marketing piece. It taught me about marketing. It taught me about personal branding. It taught me so much. I would not. I would not go back and change my acting right. career. Okay. I have no regrets with my acting career. Right. You know, I'm 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 happy that I'm not trying to just be an actor right. I'm trying to be me okay. fully self-expressed with okay. all these different aspects of my personality coming out and being being perceived in the world as right. that and and then also you know I would love to get sponsorships in the future we were talking okay. about earlier yeah. I would love to tie my brand into into other brands and help each other if you're watching this video call Erica yeah there you go <laughs> well, sponsor, you know for, yeah. for example I was just looking at this I mean maybe this maybe I'm not thinking big enough yet but I, there was this, this um, you know, in Hawaii, they recently banned certain kinds of sunscreen because the chemicals inside the sunscreen are found to be poisonous to the coral reefs and to the, the marine life there. Okay. And so there's this new brand of sunscreen that's like all natural, healthy, ocean reef approved. And I was thinking that would be a great a great sponsorship, a great partnership for right. me as a mermaid promoting, um, you know, all like healthy um, reef safe sunscreen. Okay. So things like that. And then... Uh, you know, this is well, something I want to... You're promoting something that you believe yeah. in. Yeah, so I want to promote the, things that I believe in. I never... I don't... You know, that... You know, that we were you talking use, about, yeah. you know, a, a credit, promoting a credit card. I don't know if I believe in that, so I would have a hard time doing okay. that. But I would love to follow this trajectory of exploring these different aspects of myself without being too attached to any one of them. Um, and, and also finding my way into creating content that affects people, that builds an audience... And that also allows me the opportunity to meaningfully um, create alliances and partnerships with brands and sponsors who dig what I'm doing and I dig what they're doing and together we can we can help leverage each other's message to reach more people. Um, but for me the big thing is I just don't want to be, I, I never want to be imprisoned in sort of like a nine to five job. I never want to have to give my time to somebody. I, owning my time and owning my freedom is, is the most important thing. Not to say that I can't, uh, it, 
You know, th this is a question about like partnership. Do you have to be like single to be free? You know, to be able to do whatever you want? No, and, and that's where I want to explore um, it, the freedom yet in partnership. So I do have mm -hmm. a I do have a boyfriend on the island. It's a wonderful guy named Adam. He's a he's a theater Hi, actor Adam. from London. Hi, Adam. Um, who is, has a business on the island teaching this uh, martial art from India called Calorie. Okay. It's similar to yoga. It comes out of the same sort of book as yoga, but it was, whereas yoga is designed to prepare the body for meditation, Calorie is designed to prepare the body for battle. So Calorie, the long name is actually Calorie Paya, and it translates to okay. battle form art, uh, uh, art uh, battleground art form. Okay. And so I'm going to be working with him on that company as well as the marketing director. So uh, I'm excited for these different things that I'm doing and building and just I want to build something for myself that I can leverage in the future such that I don't have to come back and, and you know, be a part of this, this system here in America. I would I'd like to be able to be free, really be free in this world if that's possible. Is that possible? Is freedom well, what possible? Does, what does it mean to you? Freedom to me means um, being able to decide what I do with my time, being able to choose what I invest myself in, being able to choose what I invest my time and energy in. Freedom means um, having money flowing to me such that I can sustain and support myself and my lifestyle in the way that feels good, such that I'm caring for myself, nurturing myself and others, uh, and doing what, I, doing what I love to do and uh, being in a position to share a message that inspires and uplifts others, you know. Um, freedom to me means, just it really means choice, you know, the ability to choose, to choose what I want for myself, what I want for um, my, my, my future family, you know. Um, yeah, freedom, freedom above all. Earlier you talked about you have uh transition for different identities. Yeah. What does it feel when you were in between? Oh, it felt your, awful. Your I remember when I, when I first came back from India and, and, you know, everyone was expecting me to come back and sort of be the same person that I was before. I was, I had this, um, this, I had started this networking group called Hollywood East Actors Group, which you were okay. one of the very yes, first I was members. The first yeah. Actor, yes. And it, it grew over the years. It, I think now we're close to 10,000 members. But when I came back from India, you know, I wasn't the same person. And, um, and it was a it was a lot of tension between what people were expecting of me and what I wanted to give. They were very different things. Okay. I wanted to sort what would of be an example of that. Um, I, I guess what, what really st what stuck out to me was like I got back and I just I just wanted to like you know like a snail just like go into my shell and just like process. And there was all there was just all this like uh, attention when I got back and all this like pressure of like to do things and get involved with people and get involved with projects and get involved with things and it was just like I don't want it. It's like but you used to want it. You used to be, you know, the go-to person who was doing all, all these things all the time. And it was like that's it's not me anymore. And you know, I used to be very very outgoing with the social media marketing on Facebook almost to just like an obnoxious point because I was building this networking right. group. And then I got back and it was just like and that's actually when I started really putting more focus onto SEO for my photography business okay. because I didn't want to market. I didn't want to do things in the same way. I wanted, okay. I wanted, I, I needed something. I needed to use my energy in a different way. Um, so over the past couple of years, there's been a big shifting. You know, um, first I thought I was getting out of the acting. Then I couldn't get out of the acting. Then I was sort of back in, but uh, loving it, but also feeling like I that I wasn't that same person anymore. Just checking the time. If yeah, you yeah. Wonder when um, yeah. Yeah, and uh and then and then slowly evolving into this like mermaid identity over the, the next couple of years. Um but I think what's important about that, what I what I like about using this mermaid identity and talking about it is that it's a choice. Okay. I could choose to become a lawyer, I could choose to become a monk, I could choose to become many different things and each one of those paths would be completely valid in okay. in its own right. Well, hold this thought. We have to take a three minute break. Uh when we come back we'll still be with Erica right here. Yeah. Don't go away. Uh, this is Hypnotist Bernie. Join us in three minutes. Hello, uh, welcome back to this episode of Hidden Taste Burnie Six Possession. Uh, we took a three minute break, or if you're watching this on YouTube, it'll be like nothing has happened. So, yeah, so it's like a we experience the effect of time travel right now. Yeah, so uh, Erica, so a minute ago you were talking about uh, the, the when you were transitioning between identities, you mm -hmm. know, and your feelings 
about that. And it was a, it was very it was a lot of tension and a lot of um, heartache because it was this this sense of like I don't you, know who I am. Did you feel like your last identity was fading? Yes, was that the yes, okay. and it no longer fit. It was like having clothes that no longer fit, and it's like okay. what is this? This doesn't feel right. This doesn't feel right. But I don't know what I'm meant to do. So there was a lot of soul searching. That was the value of going on these these trips, these traveling okay. journeys to India and then Thailand, was that it gave me a whole new set of experiences to work my way through and then find myself. Through. How does it feel when you just got off the airplane and uh, do you still like a like you have like a purpose when you landed on on? Each trip uh, is different. Each trip okay. is different. I mean the the. But you like get off the plane and I'm finding myself. Yeah. No. Oh no. It's never like that. I mean okay. that's that's. You know that with when it comes to them doing these journeys, we may have an idea of what it's going to be like. Did, when did we you start feel out. like when you when you hop on the plane, did you feel that you're leaving something behind, or are you carrying that with you? Um, there's well, always you a sense of leaving. Yeah, yeah. there's like always a just, sense of like leaving things okay. behind. But and with that, there's I, I I also there is a sadness because with the leaving behind there's also this stepping into the unknown okay and and it can be very uncomfortable stepping into the unknown and okay. by the very definition you don't know what's waiting for you you don't know you know and the mind can play tricks and really try to sabotage expectations you know um uh, I always talk about my dins. The dins are the voices, the negative voices that try to okay. spread doubt and fear and and um, insecurity. And so uh, and that's the probably one of the biggest things my takeaway from my lesson or my my lessons from my travels in India is that you have to protect your energy okay. because by protecting your energy, you protect your mind. And how the, do you do that? Again, eating well, okay. sleeping. Uh, spending time outside. I spend a lot of time in forests these days. I spend a lot of time talking to trees. Okay. Um, you know, re renewing a connection with nature. Uh, spending time off of How the How do you screen. feel energy is different from, let's say, before you take this journey to sure. do these things? I would say one of the biggest things was that before I was very jumpy. I was very, on oh, this idea, this idea, this idea, this idea, this idea. I was very fast. Now I've learned to be much slower. I'm much more grounded than I was before. Um, I mean, it was it was a it was a journey of a lot of heartache and a lot of a lot of conflict and turmoil. But I believe that's that's part of that's part of the lesson. That's part of how we learn. You know, there's this great Osho quote about how you cannot reach the sunny shores of enlightenment without first passing through the valley of tears. Okay. So I definitely passed the valley of tears a couple couple different couple different tri tricks. Okay. Um, so I I would say that I'm I'm now on the other side on the other side of my sad and return also because okay. all of these travels all of these these travels that I did corresponded with my my Saturn return, which is around, which is the the time in a person's life that where there's big upheaval of meaning, okay. um, and people really a lot of structures get broken down and new ones built up. So the past couple of years have been really painful because a lot of things had to break down. Okay, relationships. Do you think job. that is necessary? Yes, yes. Uh, you know, I was saying that I um. I'm really fascinated by trees, and I spent a lot of time in forests and, and learning okay. about the way trees grow. And one of the most interesting things I learned about forests and the way forests grow is that disturbance is very important for the healthy growth of the forest. Okay. And by that I mean when a big tree comes down by wind, fire, or even being cut if it's not being overlogged, but when that when that big tree comes down, all of a sudden there's new space in the canopy right. where new light is coming in. Where before there was there was a, a shadow, before where there was a canopy covering blocking the light. Okay. Now it's open, and so that gives the chance for new trees to grow into that space, new plants to grow, so it supports biodiversity. So in the same way, if we look at the, ourselves as these metaphors, or the, ourselves as trees as metaphors for ourselves, we can learn that when we have these big disturbances in our lives. You know, a a a, a loss, loss, a change, an upheaval, a right. a dissolution, a you know, a, you know, it's actually good. It, it can be a really good thing because it can take away that which is not working and replace it with something that works better for for the for the growth of the overall ecosystem. You know, so I see myself as striving to have an el a healthy ecosystem, and I know that that disturbance that I've experienced in my life actually supports that. Because otherwise, you know, if I didn't have such a horrible boss and and feel so uh, oh, yeah. such a strong need to quit that job, 
I might still be working that job, and I wouldn't have had all this new growth in my life and all these you new experiences. You can be a lonely realtor. That would be a... Oh, no. You could be selling house of swimming pools. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> I'll sell houses under the sea. No, the, 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 the real estate was, was such a short-lived thing, and it was just a, a way for me to get out okay. of the job. It just gave me the courage to get out, but then I had to be honest with myself that I didn't want to sell people's houses. That's not how I wanted to help people, you know? Okay. And, and if everything works out perfectly, how would you see yourself be different? So first off, so so what you want to overcome is like kind of like a a fear of the unknown. What I yeah, um, fear of the unknown, but also like a res it's so, sort of like the resistance within okay. me that is stopping me from um, taking steps and actions that I know that I need do to take. Do you feel that something is blocking you? Or? Yes, okay. I do feel that something is blocking that? me. Um, it's like it's like when I have when I have something that I know I need. Where to do, do you feel that in your body? Probably in my mind and in my heart. This block, it feels like. But like so, so just close your eyes and scan your body, and just feel the energy that would normally flow through you when everything is happening perfectly. It feels like there's a block in my mind, like here. Your mind or your head? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, it feels you know, like... My hair comes off my head. It doesn't come off my mind, right? So you see... That's that true. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess there's a there's a block inside my head, but my mind is also inside my head. Which... Okay, close your eyes again. Which part of your head? It's like here. Okay. Anywhere else? Like this, like um, when you let that energy flow through you, does any part of your body feels kind of like off? Do you mean when the energy is flowing in the way that it should be, or when it's resisting? Well, if it is resisting, then it is resisting, right? Yeah. If it's not resisting, then we don't have a problem. Right? That's true. Yeah. Um... Okay, so let's let's use your word. Like, where where do you feel is resisting? Because sometimes it could be some things that you couldn't articulate, right? So just let your body speak for itself. It just feels like it's in my mind. Like it's in my head. Okay. It's all in my head. Okay. And if everything works out perfectly, how would you see yourself be different? If everything worked out perfectly, how I would see myself in, would be uh, just more grounded and not so jumpy. Like I wanna, I wanna, you know, I've I've had all these different experiences over these past couple of years, and I've changed my path many times. Um, I guess what if it was everything felt like it would work, it was working. I guess it would feel like single pointed focus. I would okay. feel more focused. I would feel more directed. I wouldn't be. Is that point of focus in yeah. your body or out of your body? I guess the point of focus is like directly ahead of me. Okay. You know, like that. Is that a, a where you focus? How would how do you see your energy? Can you describe how you see your energy being focused? I guess. Do um, you know when there's a lot of distortion? Okay. Right. Uh, what so, color would be that aura? Uh, the distortion would be like red and yellow with like sparks of like orange like like fire okay. like 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 sparks you okay. know flying off and in if, different if directions it's perfectly so so where do you see that point of focus could you point out um what what comes back is when i was training in the calorie because that's what calorie okay. is all about is developing that echo grata single pointed okay. focus and uh i when we we're doing the training i would be you doing these kicks okay uh, and i would just I'd pick a point on the on the far wall, and I would just do my exercises and my forms and my kicks with that point. Okay. So I sort of see my my single point of focus being like in the same way that when I'm doing that martial art, that I, okay. I see it ahead of me. And if if everything works out perfectly, how would you see that point differently? Mm. With a softness. This is this is I think this is what that focus is like. It's targeted, but it's soft. It's not tense. It's not. Okay. 
stressful. It's like a soft focus on okay. what's most important. Ooh, that's good. I want a soft focus on okay. what's most important. And I want to stay on track and I don't want to get distracted. And, and uh, how much time do you spend on... Think about how much time you spend on trying to focus and think of how much time you spend on actually describing that focus. I don't understand. You, you spend so much time trying to get a focus, but you often actually think about what the focus is like. Yeah. Yes. Right. I, I have not really thought about much what that focus is but like. You just, but you I just know, know that, I that, I that you need to focus. But I know that I need it because... But you haven't thought about what it is like. Yeah. And that, that's who very much who I was when I first started coming here is I was very scattered. There was no okay. focus. You know, I was interested in this. I was interested in this. I wanted to do this. I was saying yes to all these people. I wasn't focused on okay. any one thing. I was scattered. So now... And I think I remember I remember talking one one of our our sessions talking about a laser diffuse cloud right. of energy and just like coming together right. like this, so um, yeah. Okay. Um, so what we're about to do is hypnosis. Um, so you know you have done this before, and uh, you're already in the mood. <laughs> I'm in the mood. I'm ready. Uh, yeah. So just have your feet flat on the floor. Um, so as you remember, uh, so hypnosis is not sleep yeah. at no point. Uh, um, now my see. feet can be flat on the floor. I'm a tiny okay. person. Maybe just put it on the uh, rail, raise the seat up. That way, at least uh, you know this is a show. And <laughs> all right, there, <laughs> there we go. I think that that feels that was right. kind yeah. of fun. Show them my true form. <laughs> I'm actually really this yeah, big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is special effects Erica, to make only me like a life-size yeah. person. <laughs> yeah. We have done a lot of ethics in the, in the, in fixing this. Okay, so uh, so hypnosis is not sleep. Um, at no point you'll be uh, passed out, um, but don't try to go into hypnosis. Um, the harder you try to go to hypnosis, the harder it is to actually go under hypnosis. So it's kind of like trying to fall asleep. The harder you try to fall asleep, the harder it is for it to happen. Okay. Okay, so um, I want you to just hold out your hands like this. I just want you to very gently press down on my palm right here. Now I want you to focus on that red dot on the camera over there. That's so eyes open? With your eyes open. That would make sense. Just take a real deep breath in. And as you gently press down on my hand, at some point your palm is going to touch your knee. At that point I would like you to close your eyes, but remain focused on that spot in front of you. And just for the next 10, 20 minutes or so, we will use that spot as your focus, just to practice on that laser focus ahead of you. And in the future, you can change that focus in whatever shape you like, but this is just a practice to, uh, to focus your concentration and focus your energy on that spot right there. As soon as you close your eyes, I want you to imagine yourself on a calm, quiet beach. It could be a beach that you have been before, or it could be a beach that you always wanted to visit. It could be a imaginary beach or something that you have seen in a magazine or in a blog post, but somewhere you would like to be, where everything is perfect. It is your personal paradise that you can do whatever you want in that beach. It's okay. You can express your emotions. It's okay. I love it. I love it. Yes. And I can see that you are already experiencing that in your mind's side. Good. Just take a deep breath in. Yeah. <laughs> Are you ready? And let it out. That's right. I just want you to imagine yourself on that beach right now. Now in the back of your eyelid, I just still want you to maintain focus on that red dot in front of you. Now since your eyes are closed, you can move that dot anywhere you want in your mind. But remain focused on that red dot. That dot could be more refined or softened up as you like. It could come closer to you or further away. You have perfect 
manipulation of that thought in your mind's eye right now. But remain focused on that thought as you imagine yourself on the calm, quiet beach. It is as if you can project that beach on the back of your eyelids. You can still see the warm ray of the sun reflecting on whatever greenery or water that is on that beach. It is as if you can see through your eyelids and just be fully immersed in this beach. That's right. And you can feel the warm ray of the sun on your nose and in your cheek into the center of your body. That's right. And you can even feel the warm sand on your back if you're laying down. And you can feel the breeze of the ocean on your eyelashes and in the back of your ears and on your fingertips. And you can even feel the warmth of the sand in between your toes. As you find yourself sinking deeper and deeper into the sand. That's right. Good. When it counts backwards from 5 to 1, with each number it counts, you find yourself sinking deeper and deeper into the chair that you're in right now. With each number I count, this is as if you are sinking through the chair, all the way down in the trance, all the way down in the hypnosis. And you know and I know that this is a perfect state of mind where everything is perfect. It is the perfect state of mind where all energy are flowing freely. It is the perfect state of mind where all the distractions are gone and all the baggages has been lifted and all you have to do is just focus on that red dot in front of you and you can feel all the excess energy that is sparkling all around you be directed onto that spot right there. So count from five, just allow yourself to sink deeper and deeper, four, Relax, let go, sleep, relax, let go, sleep, three, that's right, sinking into your chair now, that's right, all the way down, deeper and deeper, three, relax, let go, Asleep. One. Relax. Let go. And just allow yourself to sink deeper and deeper into hypnosis now. Just let go of all the tension. Let it go, let it go, let it go. That's right. Just let go, let go, let go. That's right. Whatever tension that you're holding on. Just let it go right now. Now in the past, you may have experienced some weight of emotions or negativity or at some point people may have said something to you that are negative or you have said something to yourself that are negative. You may or may not be able to remember everything or you may or may not be able to articulate the particular emotion that you are holding on. At some point in the past, it may serve some purpose in holding on to them. But now, you're ready to move on. I just want you to use your unconscious mind to scan your body and find all those negativity, negative thoughts, negative feelings, or negative behavioral patterns that you consciously or unconsciously are holding on. You no longer need to hold on to them anymore. Just let it go, let it go, let it go. 
Let it dissipate into the universe. That's right. And just let it go as if you're letting go a ton of bricks that you've been holding on. It's as if you're climbing a mountain with a bag, backpack full of rocks. You can now gently place it on the ground and just feel how light it is. Feel how light your shoulders feel. Just feel how light your body feels. This is as if you are now walking through a battle cloud. Everywhere you walk, everyone you meet, you just feel so much lighter, so much more at ease. That's right. And I want you to continue to scan your body and find all those negative energy and whatever is blocking your energy from flowing forward. A minute ago we talked about the blockage on the side of your head. And you can just use your unconscious mind and find whatever that is blocking you. It may or may not make logical sense to you right now. It may come in different shapes or colors or words. You don't have to make sense of it right now. Your unconscious mind is doing all the work. And just let this universal energy just start to flow through you again. That's right. And just feel that part of your head filling with light. A warm, gentle white light that flows through your body right now. It's just like water flowing down the stream where it is perfectly in rhythm, in sound, and in perfect connection. Good. And just take a moment right now and use your unconscious mind to find all those spots that is resisting, that you are resisting this energy from falling forward. And just scan your mind and your body for all the resistance that you're holding on. It may or may not make sense. It doesn't have to be in language. It doesn't have to be an image. It could just be bits and pieces of thoughts and energy and emotions. And just let this universal flow of energy just soothe things out for you. As if a flow of water is flowing downstream. Just let this energy flow through you on and on and on. Good. Just take a moment to feel how good it is. We're in a state of non-resistance. Where everything is perfect. Where all the energy is flowing in one direction. And all the sparks in your auras are all cleansed now. It's glowing, that's right, at the kind of light that you feel most comfortable in. And at some point you may feel little tingles in your body, maybe a nerve would take you in there, that is when your body is just soothing out and letting go of all the blockages that you might be holding on. And this process is going to happen long after our session is here today. I want you to just find a spot again, that little red dot. And by this time it may have changed color, it may have changed distance. It may have changed in this opacity or in the bright and softness of the spot. And just find the right softness of the spot in front of you. And now feel all the energy flowing 
channeling, focusing, like a laser, shooting straight forward. That's right. And just feel yourself moving into this new you, this new identity, confident, focus, non-resistant, happy. This new you who is accepting of all the possibility that life has to offer. And now feel yourself connecting with all the life forces around the world and all around you, connecting with all the universal flow of energy all around you. And as I count from 1 to 10, on which number 10 you can come back to this room feeling great, feeling like you've just left for the last 12 hours, confident, focused, and happy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Take a deep breath in. Nine. Whenever you're ready, you can open your eyes. Ten. <sighs> Welcome back. Mm. It feels good, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. So yeah, so just very quickly, we have about 15 seconds left. So how does it feel this time compared to the other times that mm. you've enjoyed it? Very so. relaxing. Um, very soft, very relaxing, very good. Okay. Well, uh, would you recommend this experience to all your friends? Oh yes, of course. Okay, well, Absolutely. thank you for coming. Hope I hope to see you again. Um, at some point in the future and tell, give us an update on uh, how you're doing. Thank you. And uh, this is Hypnotist Bernie. Join us next week on CCTV Channel 9, Cambridge. <laughs>